church. It is good to see each and every one of you gathered here today as we come together to worship our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus. My name is Amanda, and I have the great privilege to be the pastor here at Millington First United Methodist Church. On behalf of our congregation, if you are visiting for the first time or the first time in a while, we are so grateful you are here, and we pray that each gathered in this space both physically or spiritually joining us online, would be touched by God's grace and peace this very day. I have a few announcements I'd like to share with you about what's happening in the life of our church. You can find these and more announcements printed in your bulletin and shared on our screen here in worship, as well as on our announcement screens in the hallway to my left and your right. If you should need a restroom during worship, you'll also find restrooms in that hallway, or there is one at the back of our sanctuary. We have a lot going on in our church of our regular opportunities for engaging in worship, so I want to highlight two special opportunities coming up that don't happen each day or part of the year. First, our Ladies' Day Out is meeting for lunch this week on Friday, June 9th. Is that the right date? Friday, June, this Friday, um, and uh, they're meeting at 1130 at, at Harry's Italian Restaurant here in town. If you can let Ann go in or Lorraine Miller know that you're coming, they would be happy to welcome you. It's a uh, fun opportunity to just have a fellowship and share a good meal together. So if you've never been to a ladies' day out and you're looking for a little extra socialization this week, this is a great way to join together with the women of our congregation. Also, you'll notice that there's an insert for Dayshore, both a reminder to register. Our registration numbers keep going up day by day, and we're certainly excited for all the young kiddos who are going to make their way here at the end of the month to learn about the love of Jesus. But we need you to volunteer to make that possible. The good news is that our Dayshore staff from Lakeshore will bring all of the curriculum and programming, plans for worship and lessons and crafts, and all you have to bring is yourself willing to help us make a meal or to travel around with campers during the day. You'll note that in our insert, which you can fill out today and turn in during the offering, it gives you different opportunities as well as different days of the week that you can volunteer. I hope that each person here will be able to share day short in some small way, uh, whether you volunteer or whether you donate some money to help us feed our children as well as cover the cost of scholarships. Uh, we're grateful for your uh, support and your love of Day Shore. Uh, that is the support and love of our children as they learn more about the God of love and grace. As I mentioned earlier, you'll find other announcements printed in your bulletin. But at this time, let us quiet our hearts and center our minds as we come to worship God. <clears throat>
join together in our call to worship. We'll read responsibly. Come into God's presence. All are welcome here. Come, saints and sinners alike. We are, we are all God's children. Faith has brought us here. Grace will make us whole. Come, let us worship. Good morning. Thank you, Elizabeth, for that beautiful <laughs> prelude in Christ alone. Our hymn of praise this morning is Lead On, O King Eternal. can be found on page 580 in the United Methodist Hymnal, or the words are projected on the screen. We'll sing all three verses. within our lives and our hands, gifts of friends and relationship, of family and love, the gift of a community of faith, and yes, the gift and blessing of resources to help us live and survive and enjoy this life that you have given. God, now we return to you these gifts, our life, our passions, our talents, and yes, our financial offerings and tithes as well. We pray that you would use all of us to bring glory to your name 
as we together build your kingdom. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sunday school. Was it extra fun? Yeah. I'm so glad that you have a place to come and learn about the love of Jesus. Today, our big kids out there are going to hear a scripture story about when Jesus met someone very special and asked him to come on an adventure. You know, Jesus sort of played a game with this person that you might know. Have you ever played Simon Says? Yeah. yeah. So what happens in Simon Says? Tell me. What are the rules? Yes, Madeline. So Simon says, Simon says, you have to do whatever they say. And if they don't say it, and you eat it, you're out. That's right. So in this story that we're going to read from Scripture, Jesus meets someone named Matthew. And he looks at Matthew, and he says, come follow me. So what do you think Matthew did? He followed him. That's exactly right. You know, we call this a call story. Jesus calls out to someone. And they come and follow him. Jesus calls out to us, too, to come and follow that means him. You're a disciple. That's exactly right. That means you're a disciple. Matthew became a disciple with some other people. And we're disciples today, too. Exactly right, Liam. And so when we live out our life as disciples, it's like we're playing the game Jesus says. <coughs> what are some of the things you think Jesus would tell us to do that we would want to follow? Yes, Macy. Be kind. Excellent. I think Jesus would say be kind. Follow directions. Follow directions. Yes, absolutely. Both the directions he gives and Jesus liked us to respect our parents and our elders too. And so we follow their directions as well. What else do you think? Uh, you can just keep thinking. Anybody else? <laughs> I'll come back to you in a second. Anybody else? What's something else Jesus would say? Absolutely. Jesus taught about forgiveness all the time. He would want us to forgive people, especially because sometimes people make mistakes and on accident they hurt our feelings. Anybody else? Yes. Forgive all sins. Forgive sins. You know, that's right. Jesus told us to forgive sins. So we forgive the accidents too, but sometimes we have to forgive people when they hurt our feelings on purpose too. That can be a little bit harder, can it? Yes, that's right. 
Well, that's what we do. We play our, this wonderful game of life, this big adventure that matters a whole lot. We just have one precious life to live. And you and I, we are following Jesus each and every day. So the next time you play Simon Says, I want you to think about what would Jesus say? How can I do something today that Jesus taught me to do? I know you guys are already excellent at the game Jesus Says, and you're going to do it all throughout your whole life long and follow him as a disciple, just like Matthew did. Jesus called out to you and said, follow me, and you were saying yes every time you share love or you're kind or you forgive or you listen to directions. So let's pray together and thank God for this adventure and pray for the strength to follow Jesus. Will you pray by repeating after me? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. We know that he calls out to us and says, follow me. Dear God, each and every day, help us follow Jesus with what we say and what we think and what we do. We want to share his love and shine his light so that when others see us, they will really see Jesus and know about him. We love you so much and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for helping me stay. I'll see you later. As we continue in the spirit of prayer, we give thanks for the faith of children uh, that remind us that sometimes it is just as simple as being kind and following God's instructions to be disciples of Jesus. We give thanks for their childlike faith, and we seek to emulate it in the ways that we trust in our Heavenly Father. As we come together as a community of faith for prayer, we know that we come to support one another, to find strength in time of need as we share the concerns of our hearts, and to celebrate with each other in moments of joy. As we come now for prayer, what joys or concerns might you lift up this day? Yes, Phil. Heaven to have you back in church. Absolutely. That is a great joy. We're very grateful after a long period of recovery to have Debbie back here and worship with us. And there's some other friends I see scattered throughout the sanctuary we haven't seen in a moment here in person. We're so glad to have you here today, too. We pray for all of those who are continuing to work on their health and seeking health and wholeness in the name of Jesus. Friends, what others might you share? Yes, Sammy. Um, thanks to We are glad you're feeling better, and we give thanks for the volunteers who have helped cover and the excellent organization you've offered to the food pantry that other people knew exactly how to step in. Uh, we're glad that you're back home and back here with us and continue to pray for you. Well, friends, with those prayer concerns shared, we also remember those who are affected uh, by the wildfires in Canada as well as the smoke traveling throughout that nation and our nation, too. And we pray uh, for God uh, both to bring healing to our earth as well as um, inspiration and courage to our hearts uh, to live as those who take good care of God's beautiful creation. Let's now turn to God in prayer together. Faithful and loving God, it is your grace that makes our faith possible. And as we come together as your faithful community, we give thanks for the many ways that we have experienced that grace in our lives. God, we celebrate and lift up to you with thanksgiving. Those who are joining us in worship, who have spent time sick or in the hospital, we pray for their healing and give thanks that they felt well enough to join us in person for worship. What a great thing it is to come to the house of the Lord, to be with friends and family of faith, and to praise your holy name. 
It helps heal our hearts and our lives as we seek to live as Jesus' faithful disciples in the world. God, we pray that we might live and go about our lives as people who place our trust in you and you alone. God, we pray that by our trust and faith in you, you would help us love and care for others. That we would turn to you in our help, for help in our time of need. God, we pray that wherever there is doubt or distrust this morning in our hearts or souls, that you would renew our faith. God, wherever there is fear or insecurity, please grant us your courage. God, where we feel weary or fatigued, give us your amazing strength. Lord, where there is confusion of purpose, give us wisdom to seek the unity and love that Jesus prayed would be hallmarks of his church. Give us your wisdom, God, to see one another through the eyes of Jesus as beloved children of God. Lord, wherever there is sorrow or loss in our hearts, we pray that you would bring us peace, a peace that goes beyond human understanding. Loving God, you are merciful with us, and just as our children taught us, we seek to be merciful with others, to reflect the forgiveness that we have uh, been granted through Jesus Christ by how we forgive and love each other. Lord, we pray that you would give us the strength to follow that call, to love one another, to forgive, and to move forward together to share your light and love with the world. God, we know that that is a process of healing that allows us to love and forgive as Jesus. It's a lifelong journey that we will always be on, and it's one made possible only by your grace. So, in the grace of Christ God, as we come together to our faith home, we pray that our faith here in these moments of worship would make us whole and would wholly inspire us to be the hands and feet of Christ this week in the world. As we pray to be the answer to the prayer Jesus taught us to pray together, saying with one voice, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we sing our next hymn, I want to extend a special invitation for you to come back next Sunday and celebrate Father's Day with us. Our um, children and our big kids will be assisting the chancel choir in a special Father's Day anthem, and we would love to have all the children here celebrating Father's Day with us. Our next hymn is Trust and Obey can be found on page 467 in the United Methodist Hymnal, or the words are projected on the screen. We'll sing all four verses.
that hymn, To Trust and Obey, we turn now to a story where we see the call of Matthew, and we marvel at his trust to obey Jesus' invitation to come and follow. As we turn to this scripture story in Matthew chapter 9, we pray to hear Jesus' words whispered to us over <coughs> the echoes of centuries. We hear him say these same words, to come and follow me. I'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. As Jesus continued on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at a kiosk for collecting taxes. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. As Jesus sat down to eat in Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners joined Jesus and his disciples at the table. But when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. Go and learn what this means. I want mercy and not sacrifice. I didn't come to call righteous people, but sinners. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Will you pray with me and will you pray for me? God of grace, we give thanks that you sent Jesus into the world, not to condemn the world, but to bring love and forgiveness and reconciliation, to show us a more true example of your grace and forgiveness. God, in these moments, I pray by that same grace that you would draw me beneath the shadow of his cross. So what is heard today are not my words, but yours. And what is felt in all of our hearts are not our own desires, but your will, God. Your will for our lives, for our community, and for our world. For you, God, we proclaim that you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. What does it mean to be called by God? We recognize in this call story that Jesus shows up in Matthew's life and says to him, come and follow me. Throughout the pages of scripture, we hear call stories, and they are always this encounter between a person seeking to know God's will for their life and a divine presence of God. Whether it's in Moses' story that it shows up in the burning bush, or in Abraham's story that shows up in a sounding voice from heaven, or in Matthew's story where God shows up as Jesus right in front of him. I wonder what does it mean to you to be called by God? As we look at this next image, perhaps we wish that God could just pick up the telephone sometimes and tell us what we're supposed to do, right? Wouldn't it be easy if there was a number that you could call? I am of a certain age that I do remember, though I don't know the exact number now, but there was a number I could call, and it would tell me what time it was and what the temperature was outside, and it was my favorite number to call when I was at the Rhodes pool swimming during the summer. Jam, jam one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. But I, I am old enough to remember there was a place I could call to know what time it was. So I remember phones that look like this, and I wish that there was some number, Jam Jam 1 or Jam Jam 9, where we could call and say, God, what do you want me to do with my life? What do you want me to do in this situation? What's the next step? But often that's not how calls work in our world anymore. And perhaps it's never how calls work. Maybe as we read the words of Scripture, we're reading with someone's 2020 vision, Right? They've already been called and answered, and this is the story of what happened. And perhaps they gloss over all those times they weren't so sure that it was God's voice they were hearing. But there are moments in our lives where God calls to us, and the call is crystal clear. 
One of those moments I remember was the first time I realized that God was whispering to me that perhaps I was meant to spend my life serving him through ordained ministry. I remember sitting in a darkened gym with my friends from the youth group, 30 or 40 of us gathered around listening to our youth pastor, Brother Michael Pence, who just happens to be the pastor of Covington up the road now, preach about some story about a football team and how they incorporated their love for the game with a love for a teammate who had Down syndrome and how they included him in his last game and how miraculously he got out on the field and everyone let him score a touchdown. And it's a beautiful story about football and not the story I thought God would have spoken to me through because at that point in my life in eighth grade, I knew nothing about football. I didn't even know when to cheer or when to not cheer. It was, it was this story that God worked through to say, Amanda, do you hear this story of people coming together because of love? You are meant to bring people together because of my love. And I remember marching up to Brother Michael on my way out the door and saying, God called me to be in the ministry today and just kept walking. I'm sure his face kind of looked like Matthew when Jesus said, come and follow me. Like, that's what you're going to leave me with? That's all you're going to say? We had some conversations after with that helped me understand more of what that looked like. Because at 14, I thought the call to bring people together for love looked like I got to spend all my time in the church sanctuary praying and reading scripture and getting ready for worship, which I wish that's all I did as a pastor during the week. There's a lot of ministry I didn't know, but I began to discover as people taught me more about this call God had placed on my life. But I, what I will remember most is what I learned not from other pastors, but from the lay people who had loved me to that point to be able to hear God's call. And what I knew from them was that God's call is not something that only comes to really important people in the pages of Scripture. God's call is not something that just comes to pastors called to lead the church and ministry. God's call is not something that just comes to missionaries who go out into the world to share the gospel. God's call comes to each of us. We proclaim in this church that we believe through our baptism, God has claimed us as a child of God and set us apart for ministry. God has claimed you as a beloved son or daughter and has empowered you with the Holy Spirit to let out his call in your life. I remember these words that were spoken over me in my baptism. I don't remember my baptism. I was only about five or six months old. But they were also spoken over me at my confirmation. If you were baptized in the church or confirmed in the church, these words were prayed and spoken over you too. You are with your name. The Holy Spirit, Spirit work within you. That having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Because of your baptism, God has called you to live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, to share his life and his love with the world. It's like our children remind us, it's as simple as remembering, it's like Jesus says. Jesus says, follow me, and we respond and obey and follow him into this call and adventure he invites us into. Now, each of us will live that call out in different ways. And you might wonder, Pastor, I don't even know where to start. I thought call was only something that happened to ministers or to people in the Bible. I've never thought about God calling me to do something where do I begin? When I think about how the different ways we might embody this call God has placed in our life, I remember the promises we've made to one another as a congregation. As we come together to love Jesus and to serve him, we've promised to one another that we will support this church and its ministries by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Each of us might have a different strength in those categories. That is the way God is calling us to share the good news of Jesus' love and forgiveness with the world. 
Perhaps you are someone who's retired, and what you have on your hands more than anything else is time. You can show up in people's lives, whether that's at a high school football game, or here at the church to meet people for times of prayer, or to volunteer with things like Bayshore, or the children and youth. Perhaps time and presence is the gift you have that God is calling you to live out. Perhaps your gift is your talent, your gift, the thing that God has given you that you are so special at. I'm grateful for the many musicians we have in our congregation who offer their gifts to help us worship God. I'm looking forward to next week when our children will offer their very special gift to lead us in worship and song as we recognize that we're a family of faith called together. Perhaps you have a special gift of handiwork. This church is very fortunate to have people who've offered their hard-earned skills of labor to our church to help us keep our building running, to keep it functioning, and to save a little money. It never hurts either, does it? Each of you has a special gift God has placed in your life that can be used for the glory of God, both in the church and the community. It's just a matter of recognizing what God has called you to. As we think about the ways we live out our call, it can be a little daunting at first. We, as uh, good Southern people, are not apt to brag about ourselves, are we? We tend to be a little more humble. We always like to step into the background, that second uh, helper position rather than the person up at the front. So that when we have that call of our volunteers, you may think, oh, so-and-so is much better with the kids at Bayshore. They'll volunteer. That's not something I should do. I'm not that great at it. But I wonder, what about Jesus's identity might encourage you to answer and respond to God's call with courage? You know, Matthew is not who most people thought that Jesus would have started calling to be a disciple. Matthew was among those group of people that were outcasts in his society. Think, Matthew gets lumped together with tax collectors and sinners. Now, as people of the church, we can agree sinner is a bad category, right? That's the people who aren't doing what God wants them to do. But tax collector is an occupation. You had to really be hated for your occupation to be on the same level as sinner in the scripture, right? Tax collectors were not welcome members of society. They were viewed by their fellow townspeople sometimes as still not today. Is that what you said? <laughs> yes. No one likes to pay taxes. That's what I read in the commentary this week. No one likes to pay taxes, so no one likes the tax collectors. But even more so, they were really pushed out to the margins in Jesus' day. The fellow townspeople often saw tax collectors as those who had betrayed their Jewish people, who were working in cahoots with the Roman occupying government, those helping support their oppressors. If they didn't see them as traitors, then they saw them as people who were crooks, who often charged double what the taxes were so they could keep half of it in their own pockets. And that's the person Jesus shows up to and says, follow me. I wonder... In that second, or minute, or who knows, maybe 20 minutes between Jesus saying, follow me, and Matthew standing up, the gospel doesn't tell us how long it takes for him to respond. I wonder what Matthew thought. I wonder if he had heard about Jesus. If he had heard about this message of love Jesus had come to preach. As we move into this call part of Matthew's gospel, Jesus has just finished his Sermon on the Mount. I wonder, was Matthew in the crowd, hearing about how blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are poor, for they are the children of God. Had Matthew heard these lessons from Jesus, had it sparked some divine inspiration in his own heart? Or did Matthew just respond because he couldn't believe his luck, that Jesus was calling him? You and I might look at the Matthews of our day and see tax collectors, those people we'd rather not spend time with, but Jesus sees a beloved child of God, one with talents and gifts to be used in the kingdom. Jesus sees 
beyond what you and I see. Perhaps Jesus even sees beyond what Matthew could see in his own life, his own heart, his own abilities. And because Jesus has this confidence in him, because he says, Matthew, come and be part of this adventure, maybe because Matthew knew that Jesus was a person of grace and forgiveness, he responds. I wonder, when we think we don't have what it takes to follow Jesus, when we want to push ourselves into the background and let someone else take the starlight of volunteering or offering their gifts in worship, I wonder if we've forgotten that Jesus is calling our name, that Jesus sees who we are, all of us, and still says, come and follow me. As you think about the places God is pushing you in your own faith journey, Perhaps think about who Jesus is, his love and his grace, that he invites you and I into this journey of discipleship. And he does so because he wishes for us to answer and say yes, to follow him. Perhaps we might be able to respond more fully to the call of God in our life. We trusted more in who Jesus was and in who he says we are as God's beloved children. Because Jesus believes in us, we can answer his call to be disciples, to be ministers in this place and sanctuary and beyond in our community, in our workplaces, in our homes, because that's where real life happens, where God needs us to be beacons of love and grace each and every day. So as we prepare to go out into the world this week, I wonder, how will you listen for God's call this week? How will you listen for that small nudge of the Holy Spirit? Often, like I said, as good Southern Christian people, we're not the best at tooting our own horn. So I want to invite you, for one of the ways to listen is to think, what do other people say about me? that I have a hard time believing about myself? What gift have other people affirmed in me that I seek to always push away and say thank you, but think they're just trying to be nice saying that about me? When I served in West Nashville, uh, I met this beautiful couple named Chris and Ed. And Chris and Ed have the gift of hospitality. Whenever we had someone come visit our worship, it was very clear because there's a good group of about 30 faithful disciples who met at West Nashville EMC. So when there's someone new, they were easy to spot in the crowd, which is not always what a visitor intends when they come to worship. They don't always want to be able to be singled out. But Chris and Ed had this gift of finding someone after worship and in this very kind and nonchalant way, inviting them to lunch afterwards. A few years after I did Chris and Ed, they told me the story of why they continued to do that day or Sunday after Sunday. I'd imagine Chris and Ed took guests to lunch at least 20 Sundays a year. They told me that at some point someone had named for them what a difference that had made in their own faith journey. That they had been invited like they already belonged when they came to West Nashville, UMC, to join the church people at lunch afterwards to join in conversation. Chris and Ed said, we thought we were just inviting people to lunch, but someone told us, no, you are offering the gift of hospitality, of belonging, of welcome. And that made all the difference for me. Perhaps you have a gift that others have affirmed in you, a gift you don't see in yourself necessarily, but other people have said, you've done this for me, or the words you said offered comfort in a way I needed, or I know that your prayers have been powerful because I felt them, or perhaps just by showing up, you have changed someone's life that day. <clears throat> I wonder, friends, as you listen for the place God is calling you at this point in life, where are other people pointing to the places that you're sharing life and love and grace? Are you encouraging others? Are you welcoming others? Are you offering your time and your gifts and your talents? Perhaps you're just showing up day after day and that consistency reminds someone else that a new tomorrow is possible. Wherever someone has pointed out in you a gift, 
then you hear that as God's call in your life to use that gift, that talent, that presence, that encouragement for the good of the kingdom. Because God called ordinary people like Matthew, and he calls ordinary people like you and me to help heal the world, bring love and kindness through our daily actions. It sounds simple, perhaps too simple, but that's what the story of the gospel is, the simple power of love to transform our lives and the world. That's the great adventure Jesus invites Matthew on when he says, follow me. It's a great adventure Jesus is inviting us on as we hear his call across the centuries echo out, come, follow me, be fishers of men. Come help heal the sick with love and grace. So friends, may you know God is calling you. God is calling you in the places where you are already gifted, for you are a child of God who can make a difference in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to join in our hymn of sending, if you'd like to come and profess your faith in Jesus, the one who calls us to follow him, or to join this church in membership, you're invited to meet me as we stand and sing our final hymn, number something. Seven <laughs> in the faith we sing. Don't let the title scare you off. It is a familiar hymn tune, so please stand if you're able and sing out. celebration, Jean and Ron Russell come to join our church officially as members to celebrate a relationship we already know uh, that we get to share and uh, that we enjoy as brothers and sisters in Christ and make it official uh, that this home, Millington First UMC, is where you are seeking to live out your faith in Jesus as disciples. 
So, Jean and Ron, first I'll ask you to affirm, do you believe in Jesus Christ and trust in him as your Lord and Savior? Your answer is I do. And as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Your answer is I will. Then as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? The answer is, I will. We are so excited to welcome you into our congregation, and I extend to you the Christian hand of fellowship and invite you to grab your blue hymnal uh, and turn to page 38 as we pray and give thanks uh, for this celebration of two more coming to the family of faith here at Millington First. On page 38, you'll join me under commendation and welcome. Members of the household of God, I commend Jean and Ron to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. We recognize that the God of all grace, who has called us all to eternal glory in Christ, will establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. In a few moments, I'm going to invite Jean and Ron to accompany me out into our narthex, because I know that you'll want to come and shake their hand and hug their neck and celebrate as they join us officially in membership. As we prepare to go out into the world as disciples of Jesus, let us join together in our benediction. Friends, go to the places that God sends you. Bless the people Christ calls you to bless. We will go with peace and blessing in our hearts. God is with us, and we are sent out together. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join us in the benediction response. He is Lord. can be found on page 177. Amen. 